right guys, take a good close look at these girls. They're still missing. Please share their story, share their faith. Also, please like and subscribe. That helps the channel out. Helps these girls' faces get seen as well. Also, hit that notification bell if you would like notifications. So, welcome to Talking News, everybody. And there's a story I would like to talk about. And it's a story on Lori Vallow. So, Lori Vallow, there's a lot being said about her. And I believe there's some things that we shouldn't be saying. But since I'm trying to draw a lot of attention to this case, and that's so hoping that we get justice for these children we're going to go over everything we can so anyways let's kind of cover what's going on so on September 17th there's articles coming out and they are talking about uh, Chad Daybell's attorneys as well as Lori's attorneys and one of the articles saying that Lori Vallow Daybell's attorney is officially asking for her jury trial to be moved out of Fremont County so just uh, in court documents which were filed in September, guys, Mark Means wrote that Daybell cannot receive a fair trial, impartial jury in this current location. Lori's attorney, Mr. Means, asked that the hearing be held on the matter and that he will support his reasoning in further court filings. Of course, Daybell pleaded not guilty September 10th on two felony counts of conspiracy to commit destruction, altercation, or concealment of evidence. And of course, these uh, charges came after the discovery of her children's remains on, in June. Now, it seemed that Lori Daybell's attorney, as well as Chad's attorney, were kind of working on separate levels. Because on October 29th, Chad Daybell's attorney prior had already <laughs> Um, sorry, argued to the district judge, Stephen Boyce, that this case be dismissed and not to combine trials with Lori Daybell. So now Lori Daybell is also, her attorney is in agreement finally on this, that the trials not be combined. So we are hearing a lot going on now. It's less evidence. We're hearing more of the attorneys uh, filing motions, etc., and so on. And with this coming out, you're also hearing people talking about Lori's clothes, what she will be wearing, what makeup she wears, etc. It seems that Americans have lost their interest in Hollywood fashion these days. Instead, it just seems like they're kind of gearing up for the trial like no other in our lifetime okay they're looking forward to this trial this trial is not just gain interest in america but it's internationally um, gaining more and more fuel as time goes forward so for those of you that don't know this story is mainly based out of Arizona and Idaho but has extended into Hawaii and a few other places including Texas. What we're learning is people are more interested in what a woman accused of several suspicious deaths surrounding her is wearing to court. But before we talk about that, who are we talking about? So I've I'm doing this for people that are just catching on to the story. We do have new followers every day, so Lori Vallow, which is a very faithful Mormon who adopts additional and far out beliefs they attach to their religion. And these additional beliefs seem to mimic things like witchcraft, astral projection, traveling through portals, and even claiming to be a god who has lived on multiple planets with multiple lives. Okay, this is interesting. So Lori in past lives claims to have lived as a great wife of a great prophet of, quote unquote, the God, with her new husband, Chad Daybell. But you can guess who her blast from the past is. So Lori's present life here on earth, she believes that she is struggling in her life because Satanists targeted her based on her rank within the, quote, firstborn, quote, um, a group of people known as the 144 
who are the very faithful and chosen um, people for Jesus Christ's second coming, which already passed in the summer of 2020. So, Chad Daybell, we are told, is the leading prophet, and he claims that Lori's two beautiful children, that's Tylee Ryan, 16 at the time, and JJ, who was seven, their bodies are possessed with demons or a strange invader spirit, meaning that the soul or spirit of the children are now in limbo and no longer the owners of their bodies. So they're no longer there. According to witnesses and documents, there's only one way to ensure that her kids' spirits are safe, and it is only after their body dies. It's at that point that these imposter spirits or demons have left their body but no matter which way that you look at this um, Tylee and JJ have been gone the entire time they've never been in those bodies once those spirits have taken over so what really kind of sparked everything and kind of put the puzzle together was the fact that the kids had been missing months that is until June of 2020. It's at that point that a search warrant on the Prophet's property, Chad Daybell, um, in Salem, Idaho, takes place. And it's at that point that we find out some very horrific news. It's very depressing news. The police or that property had actually produced a set of human remains. It was determined a few days later these remains were those of those missing children belonging to no other than Lori Vallow herself. The same woman claiming that her children were safe. Although not once did she ever say that the children were alive. And the conditions in which they were found seemed to be in a ritual way in my opinion. But no one ever really talks about that fact. Regardless, it's just shocking and a very depressing ending. This is not something any of us were hoping for. Even more shocking is the fact that Lori Vallo has not shown any type of remorse, empathy, or concern for those children and how they were found. And the fact that she didn't have any concern or anything like that and shocked of how they were found most likely meant that she knew the entire time where they were. Instead of the fact that her kids were tossed away like garbage being a major concern, she is said to be worried about what she can wear to her upcoming national media coverage at her own trial. I can't figure out if she's amazed or shocked that she, her story is one of the main stories that have actually taken over the title and the headlines of America's news. Interestingly, Lori doesn't seem to be alone. She's not the only one that is worried about what she's gonna look like at this trial. It seems she has fans and they are watching to see what color nail polish she wears next. And guys, there are articles, this is called Talking News, that are out there um, covering what Lori's going to be wearing. So what sparked this interest and what Lori's wearing? So on Monday, September, Lori Vallow's defense attorney, Mark Means, filed a motion asking that she be allowed to wear street clothes during her court appearances. And a district judge, Watkins, Granted that request, Velo can now wear clothing of her choice to the hearings and proceedings as long as they are solely provided by the defendant. And so I found this article by Sally, which is, she's with Idaho, Idaho State's Journal, I think that's what it's called, and she writes, with high profile cases, it's not uncommon for defendants to receive criticism for their looks, Facebook groups, dedicated to the case routinely pick apart every aspect of Vallow's appearance. And she includes a few quotes. 
quote, Lori's hair looks like a rat's nest, end quote. The next one is, quote, her blue nail polish is chipping, end quote. Then finally, quote, the color is all wrong for her, end quote. She writes that on Fox Nation, um, the host, Nancy Grace, she has previously criticized Valo's lipstick and hairstyle. I think most of us seen that. I think that's when she wore that really bright orange lipstick and she was mostly, what I couldn't stand was the fact that she was smir smirking in the courtroom. It, it was uh, sickening to watch. Anyway, Susie writes, these jab at her appearance may be concerning to Valo, who was both a former beauty pageant contestant and a hairstylist, according to old videos that we have pulled up on her. She was a pageant contestant. If you haven't seen it, you can catch pieces of it probably on every video out there at the first cover of this story. Um, definitely, Lori was in the competition for beauty queen but sadly guys this isn't about fashion at a trial where they're accusing this woman of taking part in such a heinous crime so what's the truth and what's the big deal about what she is wearing Susie writes that the fact of what Lori is wearing the trial has more to do than just her vanity. So let me remind you guys, I'm kind of throwing this together quickly. So um, I'm gonna do the best I can. In this article, she says that Cornell University found that juries convict attractive people less often. I find that interesting. What is considered an attractive person? Hadn't they crucified Barbie based on uh, labeling people on what's the perfect beauty? But anyways, according to another study, defendants wearing prison attire are convicted at a higher rate. She says, quote, an image of a person in an orange jumpsuit may elicit contentions that he or she are in fact guilty because they are already depicted as a prisoner, in quotes. That's according to Winona State University. Okay, we can accept that. That's acceptable. Makes sense. But what about another reason they're talking about might be involved with who and how Lori gets that attire she wears to trial. Evidently, it's a way to prevent fashion designers from being promoted. And so here she goes. This is why where Lori's clothing come from is important. The judge's stipulation that Velo must provide her own clothing seems to be intended to prevent anyone else from spending money on Velo's appearance. In last year's high-profile case surrounding the New York scam artist Anna Sorokin, Sorokin's attorney hired her as a professional stylist, according to Rachel at uh, GQ, which I'm not familiar with this. I don't know if you guys are, so don't have much on that for you so while some people are thinking this is about vanity but no only a few people care about what Lori Vallow is wearing but the people who are watching who care less about what she's uh, wearing to trial are just wanting a very quick persecution justice most of the people that I know even just want you know that hard charge as well as um, the well-deserved punishment for her and her prophet husband Chad Daybell's role in whatever happened to the children and possibly even Tammy Daybell and Charles Vello. It's really about bringing justice for so many people surrounding these people. People like Charles Vello who give his own life fighting to protect the kids. He was killed by Lori's brother, Alex Cox, claiming that he shot him in self-defense. It is easy to determine the truth there, 
but the investigators involved seem not to understand how to recreate that crime scene. Compare that evidence. Investigate. These are the articles that should be, be you know, out there and written about. What have the investigators done? Had they sampled the gun residue from all involved? The gun residue in itself can tell so much what happened that day. Investigators in Rexburg, are they pathetically naive or didn't care? This group of investigators should be held responsible for the neglect of the mounds of situations they screwed up. Perhaps I'm wrong. And maybe they have recreated this scene where an innocent man was shot. And I just haven't seen it. But like so many, I'm getting angry about this case. I'm getting impatient that we're not seeing the proper investigations. This isn't just a one incident thing happening in this case. There is so many questionable deaths surrounding this case that it doesn't make sense to me that there are or we don't have better charges against these two. And I have covered, you know, the questionable investigations on other videos. So I'm not going to great go into great detail. We'll go a little bit. Um, so the poor investigators with no knowledge of how to perform their jobs in order to bring justice for the innocent, that's a concern for me. We need that state, our states, to look closer into the system and the people running that justice system. I mean, Arizona's not alone in this. It's Idaho, the Fremont County Police, also neglected several outcries begging them to help save and protect Charles' children. And those cries were coming from Kay Woodcock, Charles' sister, and Brandon Boudreau, who is Lori's um, nephew-in-law. They pick up where Charles left off. We know that the investigators in Fremont were supposed to surveillance the entire situation. Now, these police were informed about these shootings with that happened with Brandon Boudreau, Tammy. And we are just lucky if we even got a few hours of surveillance out of these people. And guys, these things are happening within their own community. You know, it was attached to the very same people are in this community and Brandon's trying to warn them before anything bad or anything else bad help happens to anyone else. So since there's not much surveillance that we are aware of and in court they seem to suggest there's not much surveillance, what did investigators do on that time that they said that they were supposed to be surveillance? Um, who was it? Lori, Chad, Melanie, the whole group. We don't have much proof they ever did. And so I'm a little angry about that. But like I said, I mean, they could have something and just not telling us. But after seeing them sit in the court during the preliminary hearing of Chad Daybell, it didn't seem so. So now, right now, we are reading in the media more about what Lori looks like and what attorney is filing what and where, but not about the investigation. If there's any new charges, what are the results of those autopsies? All we want to know is, do you have what you need to bring charges? Did Rob Wood, the prosecutor for this case, get anything to bring the justice, the kids, Tammy and Charles deserve? Because what we're hearing from a lot of people is that Lori and Chad were quite sloppy. They left a horrible trail. If they are so sloppy, why do we not have at least cons uh, conspiracy to murder charges? Lori can go to court naked for all I care. I don't care about Lori. We care about justice. And we have little faith in that area's investigators at this time. But I hope that will change. Maybe they can 
you know, they can continue to work and come up with something. And at that point, I can also change my feelings on how I feel about these investigators. I just feel um, if they wanted to, they could really help those kids. But you have to really want to help them. So guys, we still have time. A little bit. The problem is trust. So I guess we can wait and see if they can help bring justice for these guys. And I sure hope they can because it would be sad if they can't. Especially since they say they were very sloppy. Thank God the FBI is involved, a lot of people feel. But anyways, guys, I'm in a hurry today. I have to call it short. Call it a day. But, you know, I love you guys. I do care about you guys. Stay safe out there. And please, just keep sharing this story. We want to make sure that justice comes for these guys. I guess I'll see you guys later.